We're going to kick it off by uh, thanking our event sponsors, which um, which allow us to to pro uh, provide this opportunity to all of you. So our event sponsors for our Junior Achievement Women's Future Leadership Academy include our presenting sponsor Sanofi and our sponsors ADP, New Jersey Resources, Allstate, AmeriHealth, L'Oreal, Lockheed Martin, PSEG, and Subaru. We thank them all for their, their partnership and joining us today. Session, please. Next slide, please. Um, so we're going to start it off with just a little bit of welcomes um, from JA staff. Again, I'm Christy Bedron, Director of Education. And um, I've asked my colleagues to join us to um, introduce themselves and also talk a little bit about their experience with job interviews, because that is our session today. So we'll start with Mia. Uh, Mia, if you could please introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your job interview experience. Hi, everyone. So I know up on the screen it says that I'm Stephanie Karpowitz, but I am Mia Morris and I'm our senior director of our capstone and program operations. Um, thinking through the my interview process, um, I did want to share with you all my junior achievement experience. So I had first learned about junior achievement from my brother-in-law um, who was working at the junior achievement office in New Orleans. So I got to experience that office while my sister and my brother-in-law were living down in New Orleans for a few years, and I fell in love with the mission. So I started to look to see, is there any job opportunities at JA of New Jersey? And when I first came across the office, they had a part-time position available as a program associate for our capstone programs. So it was a bummer because I wanted a full-time job, right? But they only had part-time available. But what I thought was if I work really, really hard, you know, and I show them all the strengths and all what, what value I can bring to the organization, possibly when a full-time position opens up, they might consider me. So I, it was about a year and a half later, you know, I, I was, doing everything I could to show that, hey, I am here. I love this mission. I want to be part of the organization full time. And a year and a half later, I did get that full time offer um, to manage the capstone programs that I was an associate for. So, you know, I guess for me, I knew the organization that I wanted to be a part of. And even though it wasn't ideal when I first came across it, you know, I stuck to it and I knew that if I can stick this out, something good's going to happen out of it because this is really what I want. So that's my little J.A. story that um, I wanted to share with you all. And I'll uh, throw it back to you, Christy. Excellent. Mia, thank you so much. Um, Viviana, we'll go ahead and have you introduce yourself, please. Hi everyone, my name is Viviana Ortega. Um, as you can see here, I am a program manager at Junior Achievement of New Jersey. I'll actually be celebrating my two years um, with the organization in February, so that is super exciting. Um, a story I had to share um, isn't J related, but it is um, a job that I had in college. So junior year of college, I was working um, at Guitar Center. I actually got the job offer because I was taking lessons there. So my instructor was like, hey, we're looking for, you know, a receptionist for the lessons department. You know, I think it'd be a great fit. So I interviewed and one of the questions was, um, have you had any conflicts in prior jobs? And, you know, um, a lot of times, like, at least from what I heard from the hiring manager, a lot of times people shy away from that question, but I answered truthfully and honestly, saying that I have encountered, um, you know, conflicts, but that I, you know, use my critical thinking and problem solving skills in order to tackle those problems. And that is something that my hiring manager really appreciated that I was, you know, just very transparent and also, you know, offered um, the solution that um, was needed in order to tackle that. So that is my, um, you know, interview experience that I think, you know, helped me along the way. So I will give it back to you, Christy. Excellent. Thank you, Viviana. And I, I keep wanting to say Stephanie because that's your name there, but Mia, that is Mia, <laughs> who is masquerading as our colleague Stephanie. But thank you so much, uh, both of you, for sharing your experiences. And of course, we're going to have time later uh, for all of you on the line during our breakout sessions to share your own experiences as well. Um, but before we begin, um, I have a little bit of a different experience. Um, you heard from um, Mia, who talked about how she 
used her her her, um, her work experience uh, in the job itself to kind of move up the ladder. And then Viviana, who was able to explain her transferable skills um, in a job interview, which got her the job. Um, I had a job interview about 10 years ago uh, working for the New Jersey School Boards Association in Trenton. And I was very excited and I did all my homework and my resume was impeccable. And I, I, um, I, you know, I felt really good about the interview. Um, and then a couple of days later, I got a call and I did not get the job. So I was very, very disappointed because I really, really worked hard. I, I did the best I possibly could. Um, and uh, and I, I was I was upset. So um, uh, I, as it turned out, uh, another position opened within the organization that was a better fit for me about a month later, and they brought me back. So um, and a, another message is, you know, job interviewing is a job itself. And um, sometimes you'll you'll be successful and sometimes you'll do the best job possible and you might not get the job. Um, but it's never, never stop trying. And every even if you don't get the job and an interview, it's still a great opportunity to practice. And with every interview you have, you get a little bit better and a little bit more confident. So um, we're going to uh, go into a little bit of an activity um, uh, at 210. We're right on time um, talking about our own soft skills. And you'll get to think about your soft skills and how they might transfer to a career. Um, then we're going to talk about how exactly will you talk about yourself in that interview. And then when we have our breakout sessions around 2.30 or so, you'll get a chance to practice giving those job interview answers. And then we'll conclude this session uh, by three o'clock at the meeting. So if we could go to the next slide, please, Mia. Okay, uh, but before we begin, we wanna tell all of you, um, if you haven't heard before, we're offering um, all of those who are participating a certificate of leadership. So I know times are tough and um, many of you may have had to um, not, not have the opportunity to, put, to participate in some of your regular extracurricular activities because your school is closed. So we want to be sure that um, you have opportunities like this that maybe you can include in your um, resume or on your job application or on your college application um, of, a, of a, uh, something that you did that really helps build your leadership skills. And certainly your participation in our Virtual Leadership Academy is one of those. So this certificate of leadership is a credential that you can put on, on any kind of application or resume that will really show the person that you went above and beyond to improve your skills. So how do you get J&J Certificate of Leadership? Well, you have to participate in five or more of these sessions, either the live ones like we're doing now or watching the pre-recorded sessions that we're doing later. Um, and also, we're going to be running this program um, again next semester. So if you happen to miss one of the sessions, or if you just want to join the session again, um, those count as well. So if you join five sessions, um, and, and we, will, we will take your word for it, um, that you have participated in five, um, and then submit a final project, and that can be emailed directly to me. Your final project can be something easy and creative and should really highlight you and your key takeaways, what you've learned from this academy. Um, so, you know, be creative. Uh, it can be a narrative, a journal entry, a video, infographic, um, podcast, web page, whiteboard animation, or if you just want to simply write a paper, anything that shows your creativity and reflects your personality. Those projects will not be graded, um, and they can be uh, sent to me at any time. There's no deadline, but you will not get the certificate of leadership until you submit your final project. Um, so you see my email address there. They can be sent to me along with any questions that you might have about how to get this certificate. Um, next slide, please. So let's think about our skills that you have. So um, if you're searching for a job, um, if you've ever looked for jobs um, online or, um, or any, anywhere in the newspaper, um, you might have noticed that a lot of job listings require specific skill sets. But guess what? I'm thinking that most of you have have never had a full time job yet. So how do you build these skills if you don't have jobs to build the skills? Um, so if you have little or no direct job experience, um, fortunately, there may be other things that you've done that can be transferred to the work setting. So skills that you've built as a student that can be transferred to the work setting. And these are called transferable skills. Um, so, for example, our participation today, you're building leadership skills. Um, so that is, and that is definitely a transferable skill. If you um, volunteer in your community, um, you're building transferable skills. Maybe you, um, maybe you're home and your parents are working 
And so you're taking care of your siblings in addition to doing your online schooling. That is definitely a transferable skill because you're building um, time management skills and you're learning responsibility. So anything like that, um, if you if you participate in a sports team and you learned collaboration and teamwork, that's also a transferable skill. So all these things that you do um, in in your daily life, um, things that that are that make an impact, um, things that have a result, uh, remember those. Keep them keep them in a, in a in a document somewhere so that you can refer back to them and talk about some of the things that you've learned. So transferable skills, how do we talk about the things that we've learned? How do we explain that? Um, next slide, please. So we're gonna do a little bit of a soft skills assessment. And these are some of the top soft skills that today's employers are looking for. So here, all of us at Junior Achievement, we have a great opportunity to work with our board companies all the time. And they are always telling us, and we're always asking, hey, what are you looking for in your new employees? What are the skills that you need? And these are some of the ones that are really are the most important and the most valued by our employers across the board. Um, so what we're going to do is we I have three slides that each have three soft skills on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the chat box here. Take a look at all of those um, as I read them and think about of the, of the three that are on the slide, which which of the ones are you the strongest, right? Which one describes you the most? Maybe none of them will. Maybe all of them will. Or maybe there's one here that you want to work on, um, that you want to learn more about, that you want to practice. So, uh, so everybody take one of these skills, um, either if, if, it, if it's a strength of yours or something you want to work at, and go ahead and put that in the chat box. We want to hear from you, um, your name, and which is what 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 skill do you think you possess the most out of all these three? Okay, chat box, everybody. We love the chat box. So let's go through these work ethic. Uh, if you have a strong work ethic, even when no one is looking over your shoulder. To be sure you're doing the right thing. We all know those people that um, show up early, stay late, make sure that the job is done um, before they before they leave, um, and do everything right. Do everything the way it's supposed to be, and really work hard, um, either with work or with schoolwork or or anything that you do. Um, those of you that really show up and get it done. Leadership. Are you good at influencing others or being a leader in a group when it's needed? And sometimes the best leaders are those that set by set example, right? Not the ones that go in and, and tell everybody what to do. The ones that set a good example and inspire others to be leaders like that, right? So I see great stuff in the chat box. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you for joining. Um, coachable. This is another important thing. When someone points out a weakness of yours, you use the information to improve yourself without being negative. So employers are looking for people who are coachable. Who, who they can who are comfortable with learning how they can do things better. So if you are if your teacher or or a, or a relative or a coach or an employer tells you, hey, um, this is how we can do this better. Maybe instead of doing X, maybe try Y. Um, and if you're open to that, sometimes it's hard not to take these, these kinds of things personally. But if you're open to that, that's what employers are looking for: being coachable. Um, next slide, please. Love it. Work ethic, leadership. Love it. Oh, juggling things at once. Excellent. Okay, here's more self, uh, soft skills that are important. Resourceful. If you don't have the solution when facing a challenge, find the person who can help and ask for help. So if you're on the job and something comes up that you don't know how to solve, you don't have to go it alone. A good manager will want you to ask for help. So being resourceful, knowing if you can't do it, how can who can help you get there? Who can help you get the answer? Who can help you get the tools that you need to solve the problem? That's being resourceful. Um, adaptable. This is a big one with everything that's changing now due to the pandemic. This is probably one of the top one or two skills that our employers are looking for now is being able to be adaptable. And guess what? Students, all of you that are on here, you are being adaptable because you've learned how to, how to learn remote, how to learn remotely um, very quickly. So um, being flexible when facing change, that's a really, really important thing. Time management. Do you prioritize and plan your tasks so you meet deadlines? Do you always get your assignments turned in on time? Again, that's a really important thing, more so with some professions than others. The time management is a very important skill. Um, okay, next slide. I'm loving this in the chat room here. Opening up to take some criticism. Excellent. Good job, Nala. Um, Stress management, okay, and this is a tough one because we can't all do this, but it's 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 good to try, um, especially if you're in a job that focuses on customers, an outward-facing job. 
This is really important. When under pressure, I'm able to stay calm and focused on the task at hand. So if you're in a, a customer facing or business, or if you're in childcare, um, if you've ever babysat, if you've ever worked at a restaurant, um, that's a really, really important skill to have. And again, that's transferable. Being, uh, staying calm and being focused on the task. Positivity, right? I generally have a positive attitude and I'm pleasant to be around. Again, employers are looking for that. And we don't need toxic people in our workforce. Um, if you have a toxic person in your, in your work environment, it really is a bad thing. So employers are looking for people who are positive, have a good attitude, pleasant to be around, right? And then finally, professionalism. Regardless of how my own day is going, I remain polite to those around me. Using please, thank you, and I apologize as, ne as necessary. And that does not mean being a pushover, right? Um, we, there are times when we have to be assertive, but you can be assertive and, and you can also be professional, right? It's very easy to say please and thank you and I apologize. Um, and it's very, very important to remember those. In those instances. Okay, I just want to take a quick little look at the chat room, um, seeing what other people are, are sharing. This is great. And again, um, put, put, put some of your strengths in the chat room um, or if it's something that you think you might want to work on. Um, we really, really appreciate that. Good stuff here, good stuff. Um, Samantha, excellent, very good. Um, okay, so let's go to the next slide. So now that you've kind of taken a self-assessment, um, you, you've kind of thought about some of those transferable skills that you have. Again, these are transferable skills. So any of these things that you have, you can apply them to a job. So if you've learned work ethic, if you've learned time management, um, if, you've, if you've learned how to stay calm under pressure, um, you learn those just by the things that you do, um, the experiences that you have. So those are the, the, way, those are the skills that you can transfer to a job, right? So you've got these skills, um, but having those skills isn't enough to land the job. So imagine you're in an interview and the interview, and it's for a job that you really, really want. And the interviewer says, you know, we need people who are um, who can who can manage their time wisely? We have a lot of things going on. We need people who can manage their time wisely and get things done. So tell me, are you a kind of person who manages your time wisely? So if you want the job, what are you going to say? You're going to say yes, yes, I can manage my time wisely, right? But that's not enough. The interviewer might then follow up and say, okay, tell me about a time when you did this, right? So that's when you have to have the answer. Um, that's when you have to be able to demonstrate your skills in action with an example. So we're going to uh, share how to describe them in your interviews. We're going to walk you through an exercise that will show you how to describe those in an interview. And then you'll have the opportunity to practice doing this in your breakout session. So um, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but when we go to our breakout sessions in about 10 minutes, um, normally when we have these um, sessions, we, um, we're, we're, we're very conscious of um, how you're feeling, so we don't uh, require folks to have their cameras on or their microphones on during the breakout sessions, which are not recorded, by the way. However, in this session, in our, and, and uh, Viviana and Mia will remind you in our breakout session, um, we're going to highly encourage you to turn your cameras on, and we don't care what you look like, right? Um, turn your cameras on and turn your microphones on. Um, even if you feel uncomfortable, it's important to do it for this session because um, in, job interviews are scary and job interviews sometimes make you nervous. But when you practice getting out of your comfort zone, when you start being more comfortable with being uncomfortable, that's the first step in overcoming some of your nerves and jitters when it comes to a real job interview. And you know, with, with a lot of workplaces closing, a lot of job interviews are done online, like how we're talking today. So um, giving, having some practice, talking about your skills on a camera like this, on a virtual setting, is a really, really great experience to have. You may have college interviews that will do that too. So this is a great opportunity to kind of step outside your comfort zone, turn on that camera. Again, we don't care what you look like. We don't care what you, how you sound. This is a great arena to practice, um, but that'll, that'll, that's going to happen in about 10 minutes, so stay tuned. But first, we are going to um, go to the next slide, please, Mia. 
And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about um, how to tell an interviewer about yourself. So um, you may have had an, had an interview or you may encounter an interview where the person will say, okay, tell me about yourself. And that's a hard question, right? Where do you begin? Do you talk about, you know, what happened when you were five years old? Do you talk about your hobbies? Do you talk about what's going on that day? That's a really tough question. Tell me about yourself. So we're going to give you some strategies about how to tell an interviewer about yourself. 